All right, this video is for Lightseeker. Uh, Lightseeker, I, you raised an interesting question, and I think we just, I need to address it through a video rather than just giving a bunch of statistical numbers up on, in the description. What has to happen here, and you might already completely understand, but what has to happen here is that I need this cylindrical magnet. If, if I open this up, it's just, There we go. Manufacturers never made these easy to open, but if you look at it here, this is a one inch by one inch cylindrical magnet. The strength is N52, which is as strong as they come, at least in the public sector. Okay, what I love about this is it came from the manufacturer, so it allows us to easily hold this magnet and have some fun with it. Okay, so what I need to do here, and this is, this is north, the red is north. This is in attraction mode. So what I need to have happen here, Light Seeker, is that we need to have it so the axis point is here dead center. Center this way and center this way. So the X and the Y needs to be center so the center goes through the magnet. And that's easily done. I mean, if you create a, um, I'm not sure what you would call it, but some kind of mount that this will go into that then in turn will rock back and forth on its axis. All right. Now, I discovered something interesting here that if I allow this to go rotate a full 90 degrees, the wheel really picks up speed. But for right now, we just need at least a natural 17 degree uh, turn. That's turning like that at about 12 degrees by itself. I'm not doing that. If I take the palm of my hand, I don't know if you can see that on camera or not, but you can see the angle that is naturally that way. See how it's angled like that? So I have to force it like that, because if I don't force it, it wants to turn back like that. Oops. You see, it's doing that automatically. I'm going to lose it if I'm not careful. So we just need what you're doing. We need to make it so that once this last magnet clears, that this will snap back, which means we need a spring on the side. And we need a checkpoint. So something that will keep it from going back any further. That's what they call it inside of a grand piano. They call them checkpoint or back check. And so it will, when it comes back, it'll come into check. So it won't go back any further. So that's what we're looking for. And if we can achieve this, and, and if this will really work, because right now by hand it works, but that doesn't mean it's going to work once we don't have to hold it in our hands anymore. Something may be unknown here, but for right now it's working just fine if I do this by hand. And if I do it 90 degrees, watch how fast the wheel goes. It really picks up speed if I do a full 90. See, it's getting faster and faster and faster. So, look at it. I mean, this is really picking up speed now. I've not never gotten it to go this fast. Look at this sucker. This thing is really starting to fly now. So, if we automate this, where this works, what you're doing with the spring recoil to come back, and the other thing too, we need to have some kind of pattern because this is going to snap back. Wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. Good Lord. Oh, wow. Oh my word. Okay, anyway, so we're going to need something. So when it comes back, like pad, something so it doesn't, so it doesn't slam the plastic, so it doesn't break. We need something soft for it, to, a felt pad or something. Oh, that's amazing. Just by doing a full 90 degree turn. So you'll have to make sure, uh, Light Seeker, that when you do this, that you can account to allow this a full 90 degree turn. Um, to get a full 90 degree turn would require me using the torque from the center of this wheel. And as this plastic piece, I need some kind of dome on here, not a dome, a flat dome. And so we can put a, um, a nub and a little nub and then an arm that comes out. So as the nub goes around, 
It goes back and forth like this, just like it does on an old fashioned steam engine train. Okay, and it cranks that back and forth, back and forth. So it will take that arm motion back here and use it to take this and make this go like that. You see? Otherwise, if this will work just like this with the spring, that's great. But I don't think we're ever going to get this to go full 90 degree turn. Let's just walk before we try to run. So for now, we just need it so at least we'll do this angle here. I guess that's 12, 14 degrees. And if you want to make it so your mounts, magnetic mounts or stator mounts, um, can do a full 90 degree turn on its axis, that's great. You might want to make it 92 degrees so you got a little extra flexibility there. But um, that's it. This is what's so important here. I mean, this is amazing. What happens is if we turn this just as it's passing, and I know why, it's because what's happening here is that if we do it like this, watch what will happen. It wants to pass, but just barely. It's better known as Newton's third law of motion for every action is equal and opposite reaction. And if I tilt it, we're still going to get the same cause and effect. See, he's coming back. But if I start off flat and then tilt it, watch what happens. Voila! Tilt it, straighten it back out. Tilt it, straighten it back out. And we cannot have both of these at the same time. We can't have one straight and one tilted over here. It doesn't work because this one's still going to cancel itself out. This one here is still going to cancel itself out because uh, Newton's third law of motion is still in effect here. And Newton's third law of motion is still in effect here. So we have to make it so this rotates on its axis to achieve this. And that is if this is really truly going to work. It works when I do it by hand. Question is, can we aut automate this? I guess the word where we can animate, automate this. So hopefully we can use the energy from this to make it work and then a spring to pull this back. So angle, spring pulls it back. It automatically angled. I didn't do that, it did it for me. Spring pulls it back. It'll angle on its own again. And then we need a spring to pull this back. So, okay. Hopefully that helps some clarification on your end. Um, this is getting really excited. I'm, I'm excited. I haven't been excited like this in a long time. So I'm really looking forward to seeing what happens uh, once we have some kind of mount system here, stator mount that has a swivel point with a center ax uh, axle, a, a center pivot, if you will. I'm tired. You can tell, you can probably hear my voice. So it gets hard to think clearly when I'm tired like this, but I keep plugging along because late night is what I usually have open to get things like this done. Otherwise, my day is taken up with other responsibilities. Alrighty, that's it. Life Seeker and whoever else hung in there, thank you for hanging in there. Hopefully you all enjoyed this little tutorial. I think this is extremely enlightening to say the least. All right, I don't know about you all, but I'm going to get this up online and I'm going to bed.